one. Hello? Would you like to play a game? No, I don't want to play a game with you. Besides, I'm already playing a game on the PlayStation. It's Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. No, I mean a real game than Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> Lisa. Come on. Come on. Oh. Hello. What's up? No, 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 no. This isn't scary movie. Besides, we're doing a parody for Scream. And plus, for what you just said there, you've already been in a movie like that before, and it's already scary movie. Ow. Try harder next time, asshole. Hey. Hello. Hello, Ben. That's much better. But aren't you going to say what is my favorite scary movie? I already know what your favorite scary movie is. The Shining, dumbass. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. House. But do you know where I am? <laughs> You're never going to find me in your house. I've hit it so good, I'm going to jump on you and stab your guts and your organs out like I did to that Drew Barrymore chick. And you'll be able to feel my knife cut through your skin and scrape your thick bones. Seriously? Oh, come on. I thought I was awesomer than you are. I mean, hell, why I said that awesomer isn't even a goddamn word. It's just some stupid word you made up that doesn't make any sense. Well, I don't get it, man. I just, seriously, I just don't get it. Yeah, I do miss Wes Craven a lot. Yeah, me too, man. Still breaks my heart. I mean, hell. You gotta be pleased with your new movie being out already. Plus, I'm glad it's from these two guys who made one of my one of my favorite my favorite horror films of 2019 that I had a blast with. I bet you know what it is. Yeah, I knew you were gonna say. I already know the movie they made, but I guess you don't know what movie they made. It's called The Devil's Do. Really? Google it. Let me double check that. Oh shit, you're right. At least, Ready or Not to even suck at the box office. Or with critics. Or audiences. Now, let's play a game. <laughs> oh shit.
everyone, this is Ben Foggins, Media Corner, back again with a brand new AK Alpha Story episode for today. This is going to be in the second video I've made for, for my playlist of 2022 reviews, which, as you guys may know, my first video I did for that playlist was for the 355. If you know where I followed the film, you can check it out on my channel if you want. So this time, this is one I wanted to talk to you guys for quite a bit, even though I've been busy with work, but now I'm off, so I have the chance off, so I have the chance to have a time off work and get this review out for you guys, so... As you, guys, as you guys can tell from my scare, today I'm here to talk to you guys about, of course, the 2022 horror slasher film. And this is the fifth installment to the series that all began since 96. And that is, of course, Scream. Also, or we just simply just call it Scream 5 because that's it's pretty much the fifth film in the series. This is not a reboot. It's not ignoring the sequels, just like what Halloween did. This is basically, this is just a continuing on on this franchise. So anyway, so Scream 5. Um <clears throat> This time, this is the first time in this franchise to not to be directed by Wes Craven, who sadly passed away in 2015, uh, which may he rest in peace. This time around, this is from the two guys who made Ready or Not, which I thought Ready or Not was a lot of fun when I, thought, when I saw it back in 2019. It's insanely funny. It's insanely crazy on the amount of blood and gore and craziness throughout that film. If you haven't seen it, I really recommend this, that, that film. So this is their take on... on Following this is their take on following Wes Craven's footsteps to the Scream series. So in Scream Five, uh, we follow uh, this girl named Sarah, played by Melissa Barra, which basically what happens is her sister um, Tara, played by Jenny Ortega, she gets attacked by the Ghostface Killer, and she man she luckily survives this whole this whole um, horrific thing she just faced. And pretty much for Sarah, we learn about her secret that when she was a young girl, that she's actually the daughter of one of the killers from the first movie, I won't say who, because obviously spoilers. And pretty much, um, there's also a group of teenagers um, who know Tara because uh, she's their best, she's their friend to them, and pretty much they find out about what happened to her, and they find out that it involves the ghost face killer, because again, he's back, going on a killing spree in Woodsboro, which you guys may know in the, in the first one there, there was a whole lot of horrific murders in there. And pretty much uh, for Sarah, she calls up uh, the three original characters we know from the first two films, which are Sydney, once again played by Nev Campbell, Dewey, once again played by David Arquette, and Gail, once, once again played by Corny Cox. And they all reunite together where they meet up with Sarah and the rest of the teenagers, where they basically have to follow new rules about, which is this time around involving about reviving like movies. Because this one pokes fun of like revival movie series and all that, like say Star Wars, Charles Play, Halloween, Candyman, stuff like that. And they also have to uncover a bunch of secrets about the Woodsboro, about in Woodsboro, the have of the whole brutal brutal murders that happened in Woodsboro twenty five years ago. And so we see them figuring that whole secrets out together as a team, and they have to stop the Ghostface Killer from going on a killing spree again, so that's pretty much the story of Scream 5. Now, for Scream 5, um, I was a bit curious about this one, because, because again, with having the absence of Wes Craven, which it still is really sad to see that he passed away, because he was a legendary filmmaker of horror films, like he did with the, the, the previous four Scream movies, and for other horror films he made under his name, you know, A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Hills Have Eyes, and stuff like that. And when I heard the people who made Ready or Not were going to be doing it, I was surprised to see what they, I was really looking forward to seeing what they can do for the for the series because again I I like the series. Uh, this was one of the first series I was introduced to the slasher series. Uh, I I watched I remember watching the first three films on Netflix. I didn't watch the fourth one until I did get my own copy of the fourth one, and I do have all four movies on physical media. And for all four of them, uh, the first one, I really enjoyed the first one. It's a great film. I still like it to this day. Second one is a good sequel, although I don't th I don't think it is as good as the first one. Like, say, a bit better. I still enjoyed the second one, though. It's a good sequel, though. Three, we can all agree, is the weakest of the franchise. While they tried to go for that one, it just didn't really work for me at all. And the fourth one was an improvement over the third one, but wasn't as good as the first two films. So when the and uh, I heard when I heard the original cast were coming back, you know, Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette, I was really pleased to hear that they were coming back. And for some of the new cast, I was surprised with some of them. You've got Dylan Minnette from Thirteen Reasons Why, Thirteen Reasons Why, and Goosebumps, and Melissa Barra from In the High Street. I've already reviewed that. And you've got Jenny Ortega, uh, Mason Gooding, and Jack Quaid. Some I knew, but there was a few I just don't really, I didn't know that much. So I was looking for what they can do for this series, for this new entry in this franchise. And when the trailers dropped by, I was really excited for it because of the way it was going to look, the way it was going to be played out as. And 
and hit and I also hit like what I was gonna make fun of because you know in the first one they made fun they did make fun of scary movies the second one made fun of sequels to scary movies and all that well this one involves like they make they poke fun of like reinventing like reincarnated movie series like for fan base and stuff like they make fun of Star Wars uh Child's Play um Candyman, Halloween, stuff like that, like new incarnated stuff for fan base that we all love. Like me, like say I love Star Wars or I love Halloween, stuff like that. They do they just poke fun at that. And uh, I and of course I went to see this on opening day on the 14th of January in a quite a packed screening because uh, everyone else was really looking forward to this. And of course I was looking forward to it since I I love the I really like the series and I am a fan of horror films. And after walking out of the film. I gotta tell you, thank God this movie wasn't a disappointment, disappointing film because I had a great time with Scream 5. I just absolutely had a lot of fun with this movie from beginning to end. But this is not by all means a masterpiece of a horror film. Um, I had some small issues, but like, I only had two small issues, but we'll get into them later on. But my positives I can say for this film are the performances. Everyone in this film are all great. Uh, the, of course, the three main leads that we all love from the original four films. Nave Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette, they were all um, terrific together in this movie. And it's great to see these characters again, reuniting together, reuniting together again, because I really like I really like these characters from the other Scream movies. And for when it comes to the Scream series, for like new cast of characters we introduced to since Scream 2, some of them I don't mind. And there's a few who I'm not really a fan of, uh, I just get less interested in. But luckily in this one, for the new cast of characters like Dylan Minaire, Mason Gooding, Jenny Ortega, Melissa Barron, Jack Quaid, and amongst others, I thought they were all very good together in this movie, and they do have pretty good chemistry together as, you know, teenagers. Um, and uh, what I liked what they do together in this film is, um, you know, they poke, they poke fun of, like, re re reinvented or reincarnated, like, fan-based films. You know, they poke fun of, like I said, Star Wars, like the sequel trilogy of Star Wars, because as you guys may know, some fans are quite divisive on the sequel trilogy since they say that when they say that Disney kind of ruined them. And they poke fun of, like, Child's Play, the new one from 2019, uh, Candyman, which we got last year. And they also poke fun of, like, um, Halloween from 2018, which I kind of hear some mixed responses, but personally, I, I enjoyed the heck out of it, though. Um... But yeah, it's it's really fun they did that, and they also poke fun of like new recent like horror films and stuff like that from the past from the past few years, which I was surprised to hear like what they mentioned, and I was like, wow, <laughs> and, and I, I was really happy, and I and it had me smiling while I was watching it, and um, and also for I thought the two main strong performances from the new cast of characters were Melissa Barra and Jenny Ortega as you know sisters. I thought for scenes to the that they did provide together for a bit of dramatic, se dramatic sense to the film, I thought was really strong and it really made me care for, f care for them as well, for what, what they're going through in this film. I, I really dug into that and I thought for what uh, Melissa Berra and Jenny Ortega did together for those kind of scenes, I thought they absolutely did it very well done. And for its direction by the two people who made Ready or Not, I thought they did an incredible job for directing the film, directing this, directing this new, new installment to the series. And they did manage to capture the essence of Wes Craven from his footsteps in this film, which I thought these two guys did a did a great job together on you know on like being what the screen movie series is supposed to be instead of doing a different take, which I thought they did a really great job with that. And although for kind of an issue I kind of had what they did do, didn't do was there wasn't that much self aware like edgy humor like the other four like the previous four films did because there was some bit of humor to it. This one. Goes mostly goes to be trying to be serious, but there was some tongue in cheek stuff into it, which I did. I did. They did make me entertained, but there wasn't that many in there, which I kind of found a bit of a bit of a disappointing, disappointing thing for me. But still, though, the the two the directors, the two directors themselves, what they did for this film, did still did a, a great job on on managing to capture um Wes Craven's essence to the big screen again since he passed after since he passed away. And uh, one other small issue I did have with the film, other than not having like much edgy, self-aware humor like the other four films did, was the pacing. I kind of found the pacing a bit slow, but um, it did manage to pick up on like what was going to happen, like say who's going to get killed, and when it builds up to the finale, and like 
we find out who is actually the killer, if it's he or she. Um, I found I kind of found it a bit when it doesn't get to much of that. I kind of found the pacing of it a bit slow, but not like extremely slow. Like I was gonna get bored, even though this movie isn't quite if it isn't an, isn't a very long film. It's not a two hour film like the second movie was. This is only an hour and fifty four minutes. But again, it does manage to pick up on to build up a scene. That's what's gonna happen next. Like okay, who's gonna get killed and all that. But. But and for and for those kind of moments as well, which I forgot to mention, when we do see like who's gonna get killed, at first I I was I didn't there was some there was some I didn't expect to see, but there was a few I kind of I kind of knew who was gonna get killed, uh, which kind of, I kind of found that a bit predictable, but not extremely predictable. Like say, oh, you're gonna die. I wasn't like that, but I just I was just like, hmm. But in the end, though, Scream Five. Luckily, this film wasn't a disappointing film, and. Thank God it wasn't, because sometimes horror films in January do tend to be bad, but luckily this one isn't, and thank God it wasn't, because again, I do like this series, and if you are a fan of this series, if you have seen all the all four films, and if you're di and you're dying to see this movie, if it is play if it is playing at a local cinema near you, go and get your tickets, because you will definitely have a great great experience seeing this on the big screen. It's definitely one of the best experiences I've I've had so far for 2022, and um, yeah, and. Also, we are gonna get a sixth one. If you haven't read on like on social media, after after since this film was released, we are gonna get a sixth one. So I look for what they can do for that in the future. So that's pretty much all I have to say about Screen Five overall. Other than it was just a really great fun experience for me. I've had for twenty twenty two so far. I'm going to give Scream Five four out of five. Yeah, it's a really great solid rating for this for this new entry in this franchise because again i do like this franchise and thank god it wasn't this, a disappointing film because i didn't want this to suck at the box office and thank god because it, it did really well it, it it has done really well at the box office and if you're willing to make it more better de again just go and see this movie so thank you guys so much for watching for my ak after a sore review on scream 5 and let me know what you think of scream 5 if you if you did see this already did you have a blast with it or were you very let down with this one and also and please let me know what is your favorite entry in the scream series obviously my favorite is of course the original film it's always my favorite and it always still be and it will always still be my favorite in the franchise just thank you guys so much for watching stay tuned for more reviews and as always this has been fog media corner signing off